Hey everyone, I'm Jordan, he's Kyle. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at some interesting videos and pictures that have been submitted. We have not seen these. Um, if you have any interesting pictures or videos that you'd like us to take a look at, you could submit those at feedback at kimray.com. So let's get started. Oh wow. Treater valve with three weights on it. Okay, there's a lot going on here. On that trending, yeah. What is this? Is that a... Are those handcuffs? Is that a handcuff? <laughs> <laughs> they look like handcuffs. Is that a handcuff? Looks like a very large horizontal. It'd be a, a low pressure separator. Three mm -hmm. phase. Um, the equalizing lines, too, are wrapped in a bunch of insulation uh, and tape and plastic and different things. So is that an indication they've been dealing with some freezing yeah for why sure. would an equalizing line be be freezing well any any liquids that drop out inside of that line oh. could potentially freeze and just because of it's it's such a, a small line it's going to freeze more easily well that's certainly going to cause a lot of issues if you've got that line freezing off um yeah which may be an indication as to why they've weighted off that arm on the big one so hard to keep it maybe maybe it was chattering yeah. And they're just trying to hold it back a little bit. Well, and what I'm curious too about is like, this looks maybe like a, uh, maybe like a eight foot vessel, but three weights, uh, on what looks like an extended arm. I don't, can't tell if that's just two arms welded together. Um, that should hold much higher than 10 feet of liquid head. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm curious, they probably got some issues going on. I'm guessing with their equalize with their equalizing line, um, and that's why they need more weights to be able to hold an appropriate amount of liquid head. And then on the uh, on the float on the trunnion assembly, they have a weight on that as well, and then some things dangling from it. Uh, I'm guessing that's because the fluid gravity has changed, and they're operating an interface. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out if the trunnion assembly is is tied to anything because it, I mean... It's, it, it's actually not. It's kind of hard to, you, there's a little bit of depth involved in the picture, so it's kind of hard to see, but it well, seems yeah, like it's... The treater valves don't need the trunnion assembly no. to operate, so yeah, there is, it is not... You know, the, ti the, the title of this picture was unorthodox, and I think we can both agree that this is entirely, entirely yes, unorthodox. I, I have some questions for this <laughs> I've person. I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> So if this were to come through at a phone call and they pitched me this picture, there would be many follow-up questions that I'd be asking. Probably my first piece of advice, which is always one of my first pieces of advice with treater valves, is that equalizing line needs to be uh, plumbed in with solid piping from a high and dry place on the vessel, not a shared line. You need one dedicated line per treater valve. That's what we recommend. That's certainly not going on here. It's, it's bent like crazy. I think the line's going somewhere else and is being shared off of something. It's kind of hard to see where it's going, but it's definitely going somewhere, um, which is not something we would we would recommend here. Right. All right, I say we move on before we go any further down this rabbit hole. Yeah. All right, the name of this picture is Water Cut. Not a whole lot to go on. Oh, wow. Okay. There's some, uh, some high-velocity solids moving moving through this valve. So it looks like the innards of a mechanical dump valve um, or a lever operated dump valve. Uh, I'm assuming it was in a water application since it was a water cut. And I guess um, what's being cut is that bottom part of the <laughs> valve. Frankly. Correct, the, yeah, I mean the whole the bottom steel. part of the seat and cage is just worn out. Um, I'm imagining they probably had you know, sand yeah, or that's other what I'm solids, um, probably Wearing away. under, you know, a larger pressure differential. Mm. Um, I'd be curious to know how long it lasted under these conditions or how long it took to get to this point. Um, so the grooving in the steel certainly is, that's what's indicating to us erosion. that there's erosion going on here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. I mean, my suggestion to them would be probably putting 
uh, high pressure control valve mm. in the place of this with harder trim material. Um, also, make, making sure that this valve was sized correctly. Yeah. Because if it's an oversized valve, um, the effects of erosion are going to be worse just because you have a smaller opening, uh, which will cut out the trim faster than yeah. if a valve fully opens. Yeah, totally agreed. Um, let's move on to the next one. Let's go. All right, here's this video. Okay, so I think to the left is the uh, pump jack next to the... It's another another kind of uh, artificial lift. Are they working in tandem? I think they're two separate wells. Um, I think the one on the left, I believe, is a form of uh, hydraulic rod lift. Okay. I think. I've never heard that before. Yeah. So I think the one on the left is hydraulic rod lift mm. i believe just looks interesting because it they're right next to each other yeah yeah and it's, it's interesting that and why a producer would choose one of the over there right when one they're over the right other. next to each other yeah maybe he was uh maybe they were testing to see which one performed better which one was more economical to operate that could be the reason why uh do we have any context for this one no all right well, there it is. Yeah, there Thank it is. you to whoever submitted that one. That was that was cool. Well, maybe if anybody's watching and knows what what that is, they can just tell us in the comments yeah. what leave what leave that a is. comment if you know um, what we're looking at here exactly. What we're looking at. Yeah, that would be that'd be good to know exactly what it is. All right, let's go to the next one. Ooh, this sludge. one's sledge. That's it. Let's see this. Ooh. Okay, electric glycol pump, motor driven glycol pump, and there is some sludge here on top my assumption is that it's coming from the oil cap coming from inside but i don't have any idea why this would be happening hmm interesting my my initial thought would be that there was uh, damage inside the pump that allowed glycol into the the uh the drive side of the pump okay where the the oil is that lubricates all the moving parts there's probably some kind of failure inside of the pump itself that allowed that to be pressurized. And so it just started coming, coming out through of the oil cap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you see something like this, I think it's safe to just assume internal damage of, of some, some, some sort is, right. is happening. It's probably a diaphragm failure, O-ring failure. Cause it's just, it's three diaphragms in between the process and the motor and all the components that are driving in and out. Um, I'd have to look at the schematic, but yeah, it's a diaphragm and then maybe an O-ring that's on the okay. stem. Uh, I think that's all the components it needs to get through to be able to get into um, that side of the pump. But maybe. that would be my guess. Yeah, full disclaimer, that's a guess. We don't know. We don't <laughs> have any idea. That's weird stuff like this. It looks like a. It looks like they caught it pretty quickly though, because it's not like a huge all over mess, the place. Yeah, right. It looks like they and the pumps relatively clean. Uh, it looks like it probably just happened. My guess is on startup. Maybe this was a repaired, um, repaired pump. Yeah, they were doing a startup, and so they were able to immediately shut it down and catch it as it happened. If this were to come through on the applications end, one of the first questions we would ask is, "Have you torn it down?" What do the parts look like inside? And what we're asking is, is there internal damage of any kind? Yep. Um, that would help kind of lead us in one direction or the other as to finding a, a, a root cause. Yep. But yeah, some further conversation would certainly need to happen. I don't know why this is happening just from a glance. Mm-hmm. Question I always ask too is, um, was it ever working? <laughs> and uh, what changed? Like from the time that it yeah. was working to the time that it stopped working, what happened in between? And that's usually where you can you can find the answer. Yeah. All right. Next one. Next one. Okay. This one's holy. A holy body. A holy body. Holy treater valve body. Uh, interesting. Oh, so, so I think these are two different. Yeah. Two different valve bodies, uh, both with. Uh, There's the hole Significant there. damage. Yeah. Yeah. So the one on the left. Obviously, it's got a lot of corrosion on the inside. It looks like they were scraping the inside to try to find different areas of damage. What's indicating to you that it's corrosion and not some sort of erosive? 
Uh, the it's rust okay. and just because of like so like erosion will have like it's really smooth mm -hmm. like on that previous picture we mm -hmm. saw it was like really smooth almost looked like you know wood with like worm damage mm -hmm. right um corrosion is like more like pitted and you, you can obviously see the rust so the picture on the right same you know type of valve still a treater valve but a different spot and the one on the right is actually coated uh in some you know, Oops, uh, yeah. some, some coating to try to prevent erosion or corrosion rather. Uh, but it looks like, you know, if there's a little damage to that, you know, a nick or something is all it takes for that corrosion to start eating into the metal once it becomes Interesting. exposed. It looks like quite the hole on the, uh, the black body over there. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Um, so, so we're probably dealing with like briny water yeah probably water side of a heater treater mm -hmm. um you know just cor corrosive stuff i'd be curious to see the internals that's what i was of thinking this too. valve uh see the valve seat and see if there was any damage there um you know you, you can use like the delrin cage to prevent yeah uh corrosion um and so i'd be curious to see those as well but yeah just corrosion damage all right let's see that is the end of them. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions about the content that we covered today, let us know in the comments. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any ideas of things you would like us to react to, uh, email it at feedback at kimray.com. Um, and we'd love to see that. Uh, thank you to all who submitted the content that we covered yep. today. I'm Kyle, he's Jordan, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. <laughs>